Reading in progress, okay. I got it. All right, welcome to the Shellfish Advisory Committee meeting. March 23rd, 2022. Um, call the meeting to order at seven o'clock. And um, first off, I wanna read a the Town of Situate um, commitment statement to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So this is read and practiced at all committee meetings, all board meetings. If, if you've been to other meetings recently, they, you've probably heard it as well. Um, the Situate Shellfish Advisory Committee is committed to providing an environment of respect during meetings. We ask that all members to interact in a polite manner, even when there is disagreement. We value the participation of our community and want all participants, including marginalized and minoritized communities, to feel welcomed and respected. We ask that our committee members and all those who participate commit to these standards to support and respect our community. Um, and we are a committee that disagrees quite a lot, but we have um, always valued respect. Um, we do not have any meeting minutes, so um, Alicia still needs to work on them. So we'll, we should have those next next time. First on the agenda is update discussion and next steps for agriculture pilot program. Um, and we decided that we would review town, the town aquaculture license, the regulations. So I had posted the regulations that are online. So the 12-3-2019 approved by the board select board. Um, and I posted those on the website for comments. We received some comments via um, email. One, one moment there, we'll fix that here in a second for you. Just stand by if you will. Oh, perfect, perfect. Okay. Apologies for that. Okay, thank you. Um, so do you wanna start with the comments? Sure. I actually have them um, printed. Um, and, Mary, these are comments, your comments. So thank you for sending them. Um, it's the right? Yeah, comments on the regulations. The first one was on 2.0. So I could actually pull the regulations up. I think that might help those of you following from home and even here. Um, so let me, hold on one second while I share. Okay. Is it working? Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. So these are our aquaculture regulations posted on the website. And these were approved by the select board on in December of, of 2019. So I'm gonna I'm just showing you something I'm not just to speed through the regulations. At the end, adopted by the town of situate, um, 12.319. There are a couple other versions of our regulations posted on the waterway site and a couple other places, and those are draft and have draft across them. So these are the actual ones that were approved by the book select board. Um, and these are the ones that were also posted on our agenda. So the first comment was on um, 2.0 gear. Can trucks and refrigerated containers be eliminated? They won't be used on the farms year, included but not limited to seed, any equipment used to house seed vehicles, including boats, trucks, and refrigerated containers, costs associated with labor are not included. 
So if I, does anyone have comments on that? If I, I remember correctly, part of how we want people to prove productivity was um, their investment in gear. And if we eliminate that, it would significantly reduce. Because the gear isn't specific to being at the farm. Right, it won't be at. It's not specific to at the farm, but we wanted to prove productivity and to prove that that they were viable. Yeah, viable. We wanted them to invest on gear, and we defined gear as that. It wasn't like gear specifically doesn't mean stuff that would be on the site. So instead of truck. Right, a truck would be an example. Refrigerated containers are usually so in the in in this business, you would typically have a refrigerated container at an offsite location that you would um, like overwinter your oysters. So you would take them out in the in the fall or in the fall to winter, depending on how you define winter <laughs> to summer. I guess that's winter, and you put them in a refrigerated container. You would not obviously not have a refrigerated container on the beach or anywhere like that. Did other people have comments on that? I recommend no change. I, mean, okay. I think all these things are important to the actual fish you're going to Okay. Um, I thought we determined the meat, but wasn't a fee. The meat book filing is free, but it all depends. You have to file the ENF, the environmental location form. Yeah. And you even may come back and just say that the meat book review process is not needed based on the environmental impacts, but you still have to still file. The purpose of the comment is just to make sure the town doesn't go into threat. The purpose, I don't know any of the right. We just talked about one two weeks ago. Yeah. So I, I guess my the general point was rather than the town paying for these fees, yeah. that I think uh, just a, I don't know, a proposal, a question if if applicants should be paying those fees. Right. More generally, um, do we consider something along those lines in the regulations to modify the regulations to make sure that any fees that the town may need to apply for get passed along to the selected um, farmers? I mean, I think the easiest way is to contact me but with all the six seven plus that we have allocated because where it's under 10 acres it may not trigger an environmental location form so we, we can reach out to people first to see if we'll meet the threshold and that's only for one particular i think you can ask you should do it for one all of them at one time I mean, no but i mean that's a, that that's one particular potential potential fit uh, I'm, I'm talking more generally and well the filing is free you just gotta have somebody ready to submit it. Which, looking around, it's probably gonna be me, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, I don't recall the exact fee structure we had for what we can charge the farmers for. Yeah. But I was a big proponent to make sure that this time we get not to the negative. Yeah, no, I agree. I just am looking. I thought there was some other because these fees are specific to the application, but they, the MEPA would be specific to the application. I thought there was a section if the town. Anyway, we can want to look into the MEPA fees to yeah. see what they are. Okay. And any other potential fees. Okay. Uh, the town name. Yes. So I think they might have probably answer a lot of these because I took copious notes last time and some of the same people in the room, which is good. So I did my due diligence. So I think a lot of 
want you to get through these over the last last week's questions and hopefully answer some of the questions that people are still waiting for. Okay. All right, um, we could look in that and then possibly, it might not even have to be specific to me, but we could say, you know, that the applicants could pay for all other applicable fees. Because there could be other fees. So let, we can look into additional fees with the MH. I mean, the MH. Um, okay, 4.2. Um, propose no greater than one acre. And that's 4.2 C, I'm assuming. Oh, no, wait, 4.2 E. Um, I think C. we mean C. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, C, yeah. 4.2 C, proposed no greater than one acre. And we currently have no license shall cover an area greater than two acres. Acres do not need to be contiguous. Right. I think that could be changed down to one acre. And the stipulate during the pilot program, I have no problem with it. One is no greater than two, that's for sure. Oh. Who is that? Mm -hmm. You, Adam. <laughs> for a moment till he gets his phone. Um, okay, um, do you wanna? Does anyone have other comments on that one? I guess that's a. Um, so. Do you want to specifically say the duration of the pilot program? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things going on here. So, first off, the regulations, remember, they're for everything, right? They're right. for all of Sedgwick. Um, and that two acres doesn't speak specifically to the pilot area, but there is a possibility, I guess. There's a couple options here. You could do a possibility, you know, ch not change it because one is definitely not greater than two. Um, we could also ponder the pilot area and then having the pilot area be smaller, or we could change it overall to so one. Or are there comments about this additional? So remind me, the, right now it says no greater than two. Yeah, it's up here. So it's no license shall cover an area greater than two acres. And then remember, acres do not need to be contiguous. If we, if we if, right. Two. So like, so if you had two acres, obviously you don't need acres do not need to be contiguous. <laughs> if it's, but if you had two acres, it could be one over here and one over here. Obviously it limits the, you know, speaking on behalf of the proposed farmers, they would want as much as possible. Is that one acre um, an ideal acre? Uh, well, there's going to be different productivity across the different acreage. Uh, there's a couple of them here, so maybe we can get the right as well. And again, uh, profitability is limited, but if we limit it to one acre, the ability to succeed is limited if we do it to one acre. Uh, I, I still don't have a great feel for the proposed area. We're gonna do yeah, a we're better gonna, highlighting yeah, yeah, we're gonna uh, to do the total amount of proposed undisputed acreage. Can we leave this at two, but just issue one acre pilot? Yeah, well, again, I mean, we want input from the proposed farmers. Again, I'm not, I'm not feeling yeah. so. It's kind of limited, I think. I, I think it's yeah. uh, unduly limited uh, for the pilot program. That's my thought. Maybe we can open it up and ask the public what they think on both, both ways. Jamie? Uh, Jamie Dowd, 416 Booth Hill Road. And if I remember correctly, the reasoning behind keeping it to two in the regulations was for that reason specifically that it wasn't, it's for the entire town of Situate, and you can have different situations. Um, I would recommend keeping it. Uh, if you're going to limit, to limit just within the confines of the pilot program. Um, speaking specifically to the the new version of the pilot program that would take place in the um, in the water, typically one would need more acreage than less acreage if you were in water versus um, on land. You know, because you need to be able you would be able to stack your gears high enough to probably spread out. I'm not saying that 
you guys will issue any more than one acre. I'm just saying if if in the future we weren't ever able to move into the, the intertidal sand flats and you need to be able to grow your business a little more than one acre really is kind of handcuffing you. So that would be my my recommendation would be keep it as it is and then just deal with it in the confines of the outline of the pilot program. Anybody else? Yeah, I mean, I I tend to agree that we probably would be looking at a one acre pilot program, but it doesn't. I mean, it does mean we have to change that to one acre to have a one acre pilot program. Okay. Um, Why limit it to one acre? Would we want to spread out a little bit? What if one side grows better and the other side doesn't fail? Um, no, no, that's a good question. I'm thinking that the area probably we'd want, we, I don't know. It's a good question. Maybe. We're not at that point of making that decision. Yeah. Yet. We're yeah. just still talking about the. I wouldn't like, I'd like to say it's not a limit to ourselves. Okay. If we, my, my two cents, if we were to do a pilot program, I want the opportunity to. Have any of the farmers that we choose to be successful to see if it's possible yeah. at all to grow the program? Yeah. Not saying we're growing the program, not saying that it's going to be successful, but you know, handcuffing is word thrown out there is not what we want to do to start. And, and we are talking about limiting the impact to the whole environment, but again, I want to see the whole picture to see where the uh, where the possible acreage could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, we can leave it at two and not um, and discuss that at a later date. Okay, 4.5. The written proof of residency. The comment is proposed removing the right to license to Cohasset residents because they can launch from Governor's Island. It gives them an unfair advantage over situate residents. Situate recreational users would be negatively affected by Cohasset farmers. And finally, situate taxpayers already subsidizing situate oyster farms would also be subsidizing Cohasset oyster farms. So, um, any thoughts on that? Board. Where were the selectmen on this? That they um, clearly said. So the selectmen, not that this, the select board, not to speak for them, but they seem to want to like have a handout, right? Like reach a hand out, like kind of a I'll leave there to like spirit of good, spirit of good neighbors. Um, and they were hoping to um, have cohesive applicants. None of the applicants were cohesive. One of them was. One was a situate slash cohesive, so a situate resident and a cohesive resident. So, like, it would. Yeah. So we did not we did not get a lot of applicants. That's my partner, the cohesive resident. Any other, any other questions, comments on the board, and then we can. There's, I know there's a hand raised. Um, yeah. Or Adam, did you want to say something? Yeah, Susan, what, what was the uh, part of the question about or comment about subsidies? Or are we providing any any financial support here or? Um, we're not, no, not subsidies like dollars. I actually, I don't want to speak for the comment, but I would think that I would, my assumption would be subsidies like time or spending time to and money to implement this. We're not actually subsidizing the farmers. Is that, is that correct? But good clarification. Can go to Chris, Chris has a comment. I can, um, Chris. Um. Yeah, can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, we can. All right, uh, this is Chris Newhall, uh, resident of Situate 7 Strawberry Lane. Um, just in regards to that, obviously the 
the term included as Briggs Harbor, I don't believe is defined anywhere in those regulations, but, um, you know, if, if there's an effort to, or a, um, you know, a desire to open this up to Cohasa residents, perhaps there should be some qualifier in there related to Cohasset working with uh, the situate farmers to, you know, allow them to use certain ramps in Cohasset Harbor or something to that effect, sort of a, you know, one hand washes the other type of a scenario. If there were a Cohasset farmer, just trying to see So if a Cohasset farmer, they're gonna help a situate resident when you said ramps and things like that? that well, I, I agree with the, the comment that, uh, you know, obviously Cohasset residents potentially have a unfair advantage if they can launch from Cohasset Harbor and preclude any situate resident from uh, using any ramp in Cohasset Harbor and things like that, you know, basically saying Cohasset residents only can use uh, ramps in Cohasset Harbor. So, you know, if there's an opportunity to fix or just have a, you know, a cooperative arrangement uh, between the towns, that might be something that could inc get included here. Like, is there any restriction on access or given that that's a state funded here? Is it's not public? yet. No. Mike can speak to that. The, the only thing with that question, the, the question is um, the Shellfish Council can restrict where the product is offloaded. So, not, I'll get into the minor question later on, but we can restrict that. Coasa um, has taken state money in for their ramps. So I don't know how they could preclude anybody from situ from using those ramps, but um, I don't think we're at that juncture yet. But the town's part, Shellfish Council does have the authority to limit where the cash is brought. Whether it's a class resident, situ resident, anything. Yeah. yeah, that that was my only comment. Thank you. Where are you launching? Where are you harvest? And also give you two different locations too. Yeah. So what do we do you want to table this one or do we wanna think about taking Cohasset out? Uh, or a cooperative? Well given that the board uh, yeah. kind of wondered, I think we should probably Yeah, I um I know our select board is trying trying, really trying to you know, reach out, and and uh, so I know they they did feel strongly about this when we originally proposed it that there would be cohesive people. Yeah. We gave us a lot of yeah time and thought. For yeah, I mean, I I would still think it's well, yeah. I still I think mean, it's well, good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I still think it was neighborly. You know, it's a it's a good thing to do. Are all the other applicants there about Citroen, correct? They are, yeah. There's no other other town. No, there were no other towns. They were actually hoping to launch it. Right. So essentially, the platform range is pretty much locked into the seven, six, seven homes that we have. And the only co-host that was of a, a co-op. Correct. Correct. Okay. I think we. We don't hurt ourselves by leaving it in. It's not saying the Cohasset residents don't. If in a future situation, if the program ever grew and opened up to the public to you know, a, a large number of applicants, if there was the possibility of a Cohasset resident applying independently, um, that resident would have to go through the whole ranking process. Yeah, and all yeah. that. Didn't, at one time we talked about even possibly percentage but they did at one point, the select board talked about, um, you know, 15% or 20%. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any other comments on that? Okay. Um, the next comment was 6.1. Minimum levels of investment is a safe. 6.1a, is this a 10,000 investment per year or over three years? Um, this was a, a 
Lala discussion too, I remember. Yeah, there's school of Lala discussion. I thought it was first, second, and third year. Yeah. Yes, an annual investment. Yeah. And that gets away from investing ten thousand dollars the first year in a used pickup truck and saying I'm done. It means each year you need to invest a minimum of ten to show an investment. It just didn't seem clear to me the way it's written. That's why I asked. It says during the first, second, and third year after date of issuance, it shows a minimum of ten thousand per acre shall be spent. Covers it to see though. Show see that notion. <clears throat> and this loops back to us being very flexible on what we define gear as. Right. It's a gear and it's an investment gear. And, right. And or seed. It could yeah. be seed, and I have no idea how much seed is, but maybe in the farm could help us understand how much seed, how much money you can spend in seed in a year. Do you know, Susan, how much? Do I know how much? I mean, it would depend on what size. Does that on what size you're buying? It varies. Well, how much on seed? It depends on the size you're going to buy. Yeah, right? typically, um, uh, the sweet uh, the sweet spot for me is um, uh, three eighths to half inch seed, which is about the size of like granola, and that's about three to four cents a piece. Um, some people that have access to, to uh, an upweller system will buy. See this more like um, one to one point six millimeter, and that's um, about a penny a piece. Um, or you could go the other direction and get larger seed, like three quarter inch seed, and that's typically um, six to eight cents a piece. So it, it varies. So it's ten thousand dollars. You a pretty fair figure for a year. Decent. I mean, that ten thousand dollars at you know at uh, three eighths to half inch seed would be right around nine thousand dollars for three hundred thousand seed. Yeah, we didn't want, we wanted someone, we wanted the farmer or that, what, the team of farmers to invest, um, but we didn't want to be like, we didn't want to strap them either. So we kind of, I thought that we, again, Mike, we talked about this a ton, um, and I thought that 10,000 was kind of the sweet spot for, for what we should do. Um, okay, 6.1. 6.2 ABC, 6.2, oh, annual report. Are these requirements seem loose and vague, hard to interpret as a farmer and harder to enforce? Is there a form to fill out with acceptable documentation to make it clear and easy to comply? Um, this is the February, the February form that's due, the annual form. So the MGL 130. Yep. 65, do you want to speak to this? It has to be done every year by state. Yeah. Is there an actual form that the state has? Uh, I can't remember. I believe so. I think, I think they do. Yeah. Um, I yeah. think they actually the have. Same thing that MGL's got you. There is the Division of Fisheries. Yeah. So if you guys have one up online, that was probably taken from, from the Division of yeah. Fisheries. And each town typically. Um, for our farm, we get one from the state and one from the town. And they ask different things. Okay. Can I ask, what's the concern here? Is that it's it's hard to, we're trying to prove that the licensee is using the, the acreage and not, not just precluding somebody else from using the acreage. Or just that it's kind of sloppy and kind of loose and kind of like, you know, yeah, look, I got some papers right here. It shows you everything you need. You know, I, I just wanted to know, I just think if you're, you know, if you're somebody that's a rule follower, then just reading this to me sounded so like, you know, acceptable documentation. Like, what the heck is that? I, well, I would want to know exactly what I had to have. And so I was, that's why I just asked. So we're saying it's the report that they have to submit. Um, does that report show a uh, volume of, of I believe it's the harvest? I think it does, it has it on the form. Westbury has it in her regulations. So. It's something we could get and include. Yeah, we can, we can ask, um, we can follow up on that. Um, 
it's like, uh, and it's just, post it's it truly, online. It's truly some ministry in the real yep. world. Yeah. And, and we could post it online to be clear what the report is. In my, is there a way we could say something like any other request from the constable? Again, this is to prove the use of the acreage, right? Is that yeah, what we're getting at? Right. That would be on the application form as well. That all the requirements that need to hit, all the benchmarks they need to hit in the times. It's no different when they bring in a catch, they have to tag it all and all that stuff. So it's just, it's no different than following a catch report for a lost or a true invasion. We have X amount of time to report the catch, things like that, but they have a year to go through what they're reporting on. And so after a year one, I think I may be broadening the, this, this 6.2 just talks about the annual report. Yeah. Um, <coughs> After year one, you would get this annual report, obviously, because they have to do that, whether to you or the state. Right. Um, do we have anything saying all right, how many times did you go out, or how much did you farm, or show me your profit or loss? Be it in pounds or bushels, however we just define it. And if they didn't produce anything, you know, what was your effort? Yeah, then that goes to say, right? right? Like then that explains they have to show. They made diligent efforts right. during I mean, the they, they say, hey, look, I had yeah. a fatty emergency for six months. I didn't really get a chance to farm as much as I'd like to, like years to year. Here's what happened. So. No um, comment? I was just going to comment just specifically on the annual report. And there, there's some redundancy and crossover between uh, state and town, but they, they asked um, uh, how many uh, animals were were you know from the farm uh, seed or whatever of the type, whether it's a quahog or a clam or a, or an oyster, um, where where it was purchased from, um, uh, usually like how many pieces you sold, um, how many uh, I think on one of them might like, actually have a, a, a ask for a dollar amount associated with the number of oysters you sold, um, uh, type of gear and quantities because you can walk. I mean, if you submit that annual report, then someone reading that annual report could see how the farm has grown over the years with the, the number of cages or bags or whatever apparatus that have been purchased. Um, and I think that they have questions about like mortality, whether you, you know, like, like leave space for comment, additional comments, you might want to report to the town or the state. So, so we don't have a, we don't, we don't have a proposed town report. We're just we referring. Will. We will. We, we will. Have, have Uh, probably very similar to the piece. Yeah. <coughs> right. Okay. So, no change on that? Or do we think what we have is acceptable? Okay. Um, 7D. 7D. Non commercial license applicants may request fee exemptions for fees. Um, that's actually an MGL that they're allowed to um, have fee exemptions. Um, propose no non commercial research and ed projects in the farm in the form of oyster farm. Difficult for citrus students to actually have access, so hard for, pro for projects to be in the town's best interest. Defeats the purpose of keeping smaller farming footprint. Research and ed projects would be better suited to Citroën Harbor where access to ramps are more available. Um, this one, um, we actually have people interested in, um, in non-commercial research, um, Citroën High School as well as um, CSCR. So this is something that the board and our committee was really strongly supporting. Um, I, I feel strongly in support of that because I when I'm out there, I see CSCR students more than I see most people. Um, and they have access, they have a boat right in Cohasset uh, Harbor, a couple boats and canoes and kayaks, and they're out there all the time um, doing research. So, um, and Situate students are working with CSCR. Yeah, so, so CSCR has students from Situate, um, from Cohasset, and um, other special camps. But um, quite a few Central High School students are over there, and, and, and um, middle school. So they do middle school up, as far as um, 
I'm, I'm in support of the research and ed projects. And eventually, if Citrus Harbor becomes approved for, for this, I'm sure Harbormaster would more than welcome to give them a spot on the Marine Act to, oh, to yeah. propose it, to, yeah. to, to uh, work it out. Yep, I agree. Are there any public comments on that? Okay. Um, a and G. This is eight A and G. Eight point one A and G. Is the town going to set float size limits? So this is back to the float questions that we had last week. Will they need, or two weeks ago, will they need to be within a farmer's acreage or alongside it? What is the area of limited storage or aquaculture here? Are you envisioning floats that look like they have um, homeless encampments? Um, <laughs> okay, so I knew you guys were gonna read that, but you know, when you see like, they're usually like, yeah trash bags that you're neatly tied, they're all bundled together and they're kind of piled. That's my vision of storage. So I couldn't think of a more descriptive term. Okay. So um there are no floats, right? That's there, there are no, no there floats. are floats in our regulations because as you know our regulations are for all of situate. So if we did stuff in the harbor, we did stuff on the North River there could be situations where there would be floats. And they wanted to make, I went back and looked at this float question because we did talk about it not being there. Not being right. proposed But we there. did not talk about it's it not, not being in the regulations the because it's also in MGL. Quite clearly it's in MGL as well. That is. The float area is MGL Chapter 91, Section 10A. I so would it's propose clearly... the pilot program there are no floats. Okay, but but the um. But we didn't. Do it. Yeah, um, we can propose that. But as far as the regulations cover all the situations. Um, and the issue with the float is the authority is with the harbor master. I remember correctly. It's similar to Moines. But as you know, again. For this pilot program, I would like to propose that, except for the buoys yeah, that yeah. mark the acreage, um, which are like a little obstacle, yep. Yep, yep. that there be no floats. Okay. I think they've, they've said that. But yeah. and I thought that that was ironed up. Is there any other thoughts on that? I, Should I make that proposal? I mean, I tend to agree. There's no floats on the pilot. I mean, you have a boat, you go out and work it, and when the boat leaves, you leave nothing but your cages, which are submerged, and your lobster. Yeah. Your yeah. yeah. We had that. We discussed that. I don't think we need to just pull it out. I think, I think they can apply. I don't think we need to say. That we are or are not going to uh, uh, accept floats. I think that's something that that uh, is part of the application process, and you know this is a regulation for all of situates. So uh, you know it's a pilot program. We all know that we, we don't need to uh, uh, limit our our scope here. I think I, I think we're, we're good the way that we we wrote it the first time. Okay. What is the rest of the board? I mean, again, yeah, we are speaking about, I know we're talking about general regulations, but we're really pushing the idea of the pilot program initially and good stewardship. And good stewardship. Yeah. So, would anybody entertain it by an option for the pilot as a sub to these? I subset. I just think we add that right to the application. I don't, I don't think we change the regulation. So there are times. You're what? He's saying that just put no flows on the application. No flows for this pilot yes. program. And then area breaks hard, that's all. So we need a motion to, to change the application. Um, Modify the application. 
Could we put it in the application, the description form? We're not on for this yet, though. But I mean, that would be dead against in, in that area. In that yeah. Area. Oh, I agree. I agree. I just it's how do you memorialize that, right? In the application, is MGL saying that for a aquaculture you need to allow floats? No, not at all. They're just telling you the process to authorize it because it's similar to mooring that goes through the harbor master. So could, so we, have, could we have an agriculture program across the street that didn't allow floats? You do. Um, and whether it's a North River, South River, wherever, harbor, anywhere. Good. I don't think around those areas are not open now anyway. So I think no. in the application you just Identify Briggs Harbor. As See, I mean, it no says fully structures to remain or no, no, no uh, shanties or houses. Yeah, you could bring one out if you needed to bring out, right. bring back your pots. You could bring a, a barge or something to right. pull out there and then take your pots into the sea. Right. But you can't do that. Yeah, it says a granted, those granted a license under these regulations may also apply for a designated house. May apply for may it. apply, it doesn't say to the town. But may apply for a float set forth in MGL chapter 102. So this is um designated agriculture for the area approved by the harbor master. So this is chapter 91 10a. Um, and that's where it falls under as far as authority. But it's still there are seasonal slopes anyway. Yeah. Just technically, see those folks have to out of water by I think November 1st. And that's anything held by no, but none of these residents want to see one there. But the float to mark the corners wouldn't be under oh, this. Float. At that's, all. that's a buoy. That's a buoy that would not be under this. No, you have to have those. So, how do we memorialize that we don't wouldn't allow um, the agriculture float area? In Harbor, I would think we vote to tell the selectmen whatever they approve that certainly for this pilot program, no floats be allowed. Okay. For the regulations, just add to the to the pilot program. To the pilot program, the pilot program add to the regulations. Okay. I'd like to make that motion. If you're okay with this. Yeah. So would that be? So would that be adding a eight and H? So at the end of this, we add F or G, all float licenses, blah, 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 and then H. Or would we have, I guess this, that's what I'm saying, or would we have a separate section altogether on the, at the end regarding, so if we would scroll all the way to the end, and had, us, had section 13, Briggs Harbor, Harbor pilot. Well, I don't think you want to put it at the end because the last thing we're doing is saying fine. <laughs> no, so, I mean, that would be. I would think we're at the end. You think an age? Okay. Yeah, I mean, just under eight one, you have designated aquaculture floor area in federal anchorage. You've already identified all the 10 8 licenses. Like eight eight one. Four fees, four fees, four fees. Okay. So 8.1. 8.1. H. I propose that we add H. Letter H in Rule 8.1 that prohibits floats in the pilot program. Floats, floats, floats shanties, floats, shanties yeah. anything other than Ooh, the buoy boos. markers be left in the farmer's acreage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in the pilot program area. So you said, I agree. I just want to write down the exact language yeah. here. And make it, make it sound. Is it float shanties? Is there something else? Is or it, any other? I'm just looking at it. Float stock shanties. Float shanties. Float stock shanties. Anything other than the cabins. Even a boat, you're not allowed to anchor there overnight, right? People do, I'm sure. You can't harvest that. You can't what? You can't harvest that, right? You can't, you can't, you can't harvest. harvest. You can't, no, but if they want to. If they want to. They 
ground. I, I guess it's not a huge issue to watch them do it sometimes. There's some people out here. I may do what echo may do, I don't think that they necessarily do it. With the road running both probably one and one tire. So you don't want to say folks, just floats, docks. Well, Shanty's not even in the regs. That's why I'm trying to understand what it's floats and docks. Or anything other than their um, or any other structures. Their floats and docks. docks. They say float barge or boat. Barge. It float barge. barge or boat. That's what I was looking for. There we go. The, yeah, the, boat, the boat was the, that's what barges. I was trying to the spot for a week. Floats, barges, docks shall not be permitted. You want to add the word boats? Well, but like, how do we say a boat is not prohibited in the water? An anchor boat. We can't just say that's, that's 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 like, that's like, that's like slug, that's like enforcement. That's enforcement if you're yeah. if you're forcing on the life yeah. of the culture, it's then a wreck boat's out the wrong way. I mean, we probably wouldn't want to be there if it broke, ever broke down or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so, so floats, I mean, I think barges. You're talking about moorings, right? Like, or is a mooring? Would a mooring be better to say it that way? I mean, you're not a lot of a mooring there, right? Definitely not. But I'm also I'm trying to make sure that we're not, not regulating this more than it's not. But floats, barges, and docks. You don't think floats, barges, and docks covers it? Yeah. Well, that's a shed. Don't worry about that. <laughs> shed on a barge. <laughs> well, well how did the shed get there shed without a barge? So right. we've like eliminated the vehicle. So I propose okay. that floats, barges, and docks be prohibited on the on the farmed areas for the pilot program. Farming areas for the pilot program. Okay. Okay, now I got it. Sir. Okay, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Adam. Nay. Nay. Okay. Did you have an? Did you have a comment? Additional comment? No, I I, I just think that that we've we've got the the uh, applicants. Uh, applying and you know that that's part of their plan. It's so far where it, it hasn't come up, and and I think that we're we're overcomplicating this. But Adam, would you be okay um, with the farmer putting a let's say it's a ten by ten dock out there and leaving it there for the whole season? No, but. But uh, again, that's that's part of the the application process. That it, they have to have a float license. They have to they have to. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of, of different things in in eight point one here uh, that you know you could put conditions on that at the time of granting the license. Could we? Which is better than the license? If it's not in the law, could we? I mean, it's not part of our. I mean, you can do it either way. It's like we, we're not going to put floats out there. We just have to figure out how the vehicle that we're going to memorialize that. Or in the application. It's a, and we originally said the application, then we went to making a G. Um, H. Or H, sorry. Making an H, sorry. Don't mean to offend G. I mean, I think um, it covers it in the application. Yeah. We did just. We did vote. I can yeah. go either way. I, I can go either way because we've said like over and over again we're not doing it. I agree. We're. I agree. It's a. I do agree with that. I mean, we are overcomplicating it because the harbor master, like the harbor master, has to approve it anyway. Like it's. We but he said could, that. He could approve it, and we would be against it. Right. I mean. Yeah. What do you mean? I don't know. Right. No. Who knows? He could approve it. That you can't have it. Yeah. It's like, well, it's we, like, well, we, we just made a decision to make the application say you could not. We did. Yeah. Okay. 
I mean, it's, it's right there in G that, that uh, you know, all float licenses gra granted by the Harbor Master are issued with the following management conditions, plus any others deemed appropriate by the board during the licensing process. I think we've covered it right there. The board can say conditionally, no floats in the, in the pilot program. And then they could say, you know, no floats with, you know, certain conditions or, or, or your float is, is allowed with these conditions. Um, I, I think that, that we're, we're overcomplicating it. And, and I don't mind being a minority opinion. You know, and do we have to have unanimous consent? No, we don't at all. No, no. But I just wanted to hear your thoughts. I yeah. wanted to hear your thoughts too. And I, I could go both ways. I just. We're going back to the wordsmithing back and forth. Yeah, I mean, again, I do. I agree with you on overcomplicating a lot of this. But we did really. We did. So we can make it an H. It doesn't, but also it doesn't mean anything. The board, select board has to approve it. Like this, this is, is basically us recommending to them to change 8.1H to say floats would not, shall not be permitted right. in areas for the pilot program. Okay. They could say, I disagree. So, because we're mainly yeah. advising. And we're kind of split on it anyway. 8.6 A to C. In the last meeting, I thought there was a discussion that transfers could only go back to the town. Um, transfers, the right to transfer. We did, and um, partly it's MGL. The right to inherit and transfer is in MGL. One year, I thought it was. Yeah. During that year, it could be the sun. Or the spouse. That was spouse, it. spouse um, is it? Yeah, we went back and forth on that and we decided any family member. Forever. A license may be transferred with the approval of the licensing authority to any immediate family member as defined by 8.7B, who satisfies all required conditions as the owner has. Town is situated shellfish agriculture regulations. I didn't think we gave the farmer the decision to do the transfer. It wasn't no, the farmer, it was the licensing We're not authority. doing it. It's the licensing authority. That was to limit any corporate. Correct. And selling it. Okay. Did we cover the hours? Oh, oh, sorry. Did we miss one? Good catch. Uh, sorry about that. Um, can the working hours be curtailed to seven to seven or something similar? Um, Mike, do you want to address that with the if daylight you, hours? If right? you dish half hour before sunrise, half hour after sunset. Yeah. That's what it is. Mass law. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, okay. some days that would be seven seven. Yeah. <laughs> well, most, most times, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So we don't want to change the transfers. That's like the last thing I want to rediscuss. But. Okay. Could in nine point one could the access window be shortened for oyster farmers? I put one A, the access window. Can you put the, the rules back up on the screen? Oh, shoot. Let me do that. Good idea. Sorry, I had to minimize when I was looking for something. Okay, here we go. Um, 9.1, could the access window. Oh, it's the sunset. No, I can't. That's regulations. Right. Half hour after sunset, half hour before sunrise. That's um, Mass General Law 130, Section 68. One for all shellfish. Um, 9.1C. All shellfish harvesting shall be made by hand without the assistance of power unless the use of mechanical power is approved by the shellfish constable and the DMF on a case by case basis. 
Prohibit prohibit all mechanical harvesting, even if new technologies become available and feasible in this location, unless they are silent. Um, I don't know when the question was last me, but the tumblers and the noise, and I think yeah. most of, I think the guys said they would do the offsite anyway. The tumblers are definitely offsite. Yeah. These are all going to be by hand, I think. It has to be, yeah. especially now that they're going to be for the floor. This is too Again, limiting. What? This is too limiting. I think. Yeah. I appreciate the suggestion, but it, it does sound a little too limiting. It sounds like the main concern, mechanical noise. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, it is prohibiting as far as if there's a smarter way to harvest. Yeah. Why not give that opportunity? But if it's a loud. I think the town of the bylaws were the noise yeah. from seven o'clock, so it would be no different for this. I don't think it have a seven o'clock with gas power machinery. We have a cigarette boat there at yeah. five o'clock in the morning. There's a red power and lobby wall sleep in the morning. Yeah. 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 Uh, based on the, on the size of the farms, though, would, would, I mean, they're, they're not huge, huge farms. No. Would, I mean, would it even make sense to use mechanical? Machines up for harvesting based on the size of the farms. Any comments, public comments on that? No. Okay. Um, and then the last one proposed no water power boat access from Mina Kayak Launch. I don't know if we can do that. As the shellfish advisory committee, <laughs> I think that's a little yeah, asset. Jurisdiction. We're done. Once we're done, we can talk about that. Okay. Has anybody ever seen a motorboat launch from there? Never. I mean, even a Zodiac. I know some of the well, there are some of the houses close by. I mean, there are houses no, close by. They're not launching boats off of the ramp. It's it's maybe a further park. up, some of the residents may have. The so, residents yeah, we do. Get, we'll get and, into that once we're once we're, we're done with this. Okay. All right. Um, that was a question from the last meeting. That was one of the questions from the last meeting. Um, so, are there other comments on the regulation specifically? Any other comments? Uh, Comments from the trying to see if does anyone have their hand raised? No. So, oh, sure. Do you have a regulation? I don't I can't see it in your room. Uh, oh sorry, name and address. Uh, do you have a regulation as to the marking of the gear? Um, yeah. what's your name and address? Oh, I'm sorry. Bill Graham Tobin Marking of the gear. Yes. Yeah. You mean the buoys at the corners? No, the, the actual cages. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Like each of the cages. Section 8.9. Yeah. 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 Okay, I, I don't have it in front of me. So Hold on, I can pull it up. Hold on. No, I can't see the pull. I'll pull it up. Okay. 8.984 all gear tackle and other equipment shall be indelibly marked with the license number conspicuously placed on each piece of equipment thank you so right here so it is 8.9 a4 thank you Pat. you're welcome and I think that came up last time. If something washed the shore, right. how would you know whose it is? <clears throat> okay. Any other comments while we have them up? Okay. 
Yeah. Well, so, so oh, how is the um, channel going to be marked for navigation from the uh, the Bailey's Creek and the uh, Coleman Creek? Would it need to be? The, the creeks that, are, that come out yeah. into the bay. Why would they need to be marked? Well, but through your gear. You're going to have gear out there. How are the boaters going to know how to get in and out and the access to the beach? My understanding was there's always going to be um, between a foot to two of water above. The cages will never be exposed, even below the water. <coughs> um, I thought. No, but at one point we were going to have a, like a, did we say 50 foot? At one point, I think we were, um, I don't know if it's in the, right. you're asking if it's in the regulations? Uh, I'm asking if it's being provided for, I don't know where. Yeah, where I don't know that provided. we have it in the regulations, but um, we were going to create, you know, not have the gear right there. So not have that be a site. Can a kayak control right over a farm? Yes, definitely. And each farm is going to have the boundary corner uh, marked with six inch orange sphere buoys per 8.9 A2. Right. That'll be just a four, that'll be four corners. And but you can't so, walk the whole, the whole bay. You have to have an exit. Uh, exit well, we'll, we'll remark out the plots. We'll allow the access. You have to have a channel to get out. Yeah. But, yeah. but I don't think we. Any plans to mark it? Well, how would somebody know if you don't mark it? Um, Are you talking navigation aids? Yes. I don't have a mark on the question, but I would put navigation aids. No, but, the but there's nothing there. You don't have wood cages. But once you put cages on that, the, ca the cages will all be marked with a little bit of 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 a little bit um, That's what I'm saying. Is why wouldn't you go right over the farm? Because there may not be enough water. That's, that's the point I was getting at. Low, low, low tide. So where um, we're proposing them, I, I, I think there is going to be enough water. Is this I what mean, you're talking about? At a certain point, you can't kayak that there. Exactly. There's no reason to put the net there. Yeah, right. I mean. You're, you're out of the, the mud flat now. You're out into the, into the actual bay. Is that correct? Right. Where we're yeah, proposing yeah. these these right. So you're no no longer going to use the rack system. So correct. They'll be submerged. To be laying on, on, the, on the ground. On the ground. Right. Okay. But you, you have to have a channel, you have to make provision for people to get in and out. Even at a mid-tide, you have to have enough water for boats to go in and out. There's so, 20 foot boats that go in. So, Bill, are you talking about this? Can I try to, um, with the map, pull up the map? Is this what you're talking about, like coming out the channel? Yeah. Here? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, this is low. This obviously you'd be walking through mud right now if I was. That's low tide, right? This is low tide, right? So, this, if you followed this arrow, you'd be walking through mud. But you're talking about when you're coming out through here, mm -hmm. coming around here, and then right here. Is that what you're talking about? That's where you're going to be starting. Is that right, correct? right. We'd be starting it on this dotted line. So, so Mike, you were saying no. We would definitely not be putting navigation stuff all the way through here. But I think the thought is, is right here where it comes out. Would there be any sort of marking beyond the four corners? Right. So, say you have one here, and I'm just making this up. We say the four corners were here. Say you had one here and the four corners were here. There would be enough space in between, but we weren't intending to mark it. Is that correct? Yeah, but how is somebody going to know where it is? Your corner markers, you can't have one, two, three blocks. You have to have a space in between and below. Um, Just like the, the harbor channel going in is marked. How would you don't have to have one as large as that, but you need to have a channel so you, you can get a boat that has a little bit of depth in it. There's space in between the plots. There's space in between the plots. Yes, I think we have, yeah. when we put the, lay the plots out, the plots are going to be further enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah there'd be space between the plots. I'm trying to think about right this. To the other. Correct. You just have right. no space. There'd be space in between here. Good. But but I mean I mean you make it's a good point, Bill. Um, um, at what tide would you be able to get a twenty foot boat in through there? And the water out here would be how deep over the ten feet deep. Ten feet deep. So it'd be ten feet minus foot and a half. Where, where's the ten? Mm -hmm. Right where well, it hides at. Right where the arrow is, it hides at. Yeah, so but how about mid tide? Right, or five feet. Well, I mean, five feet. Still talking about. Out there, yes. Yeah, yeah, how much does the boat, what a boat Well, in shadow, what they have is, uh, don't, they basically have like a lobster buoy with a flat end. Yeah. And they don't have the tide at the bottom. Yeah. 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 And they move it after a storm, it gets moved, they move it back, right. you know, yeah. something like that. So you could have two whatever red buoys or whatever color, orange. Fine, but I'm, I'm saying you can have one side of that, but say to the other side, with no, no way to get through. Yeah. The depth of space alone. So, so if to, to mark the 50 foot channel between two, between two blocks. farms, yeah. there's going to be at least 50 feet, I think, right between yeah. the farms. So maybe on the on the north side, or I'm not sure if it's east or west or north and south, on the north side of one plot, maybe you have to have bigger lobster buoys, like a, a yeah, high flyer. Yeah. That's actually a good thought. A high flyer on, on, the on the south side of that other plot, yeah. a high flyer, something like that. You could do something like that, but you can't call it a navigation issue because then the town seems liability to put it as a great private yeah. navigation. If yeah. the boat goes around, it's not on it. So, I don't know. We've got have red flags and green flags. And all that's what I was kind of yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Again, it has to be common knowledge. Okay. Yeah. You know, go between those, don't go between the two red flags, because yeah. then you're over the farm. Yeah. Don't go between the green and the red, red flag, the green flag. Or but even the Coast Guard has to permit that. It's like, and it's part of that form that says, how to keep the water at low tide. And you're going to say, nothing. And that, then why are you putting the navigation in here? It's, it's not going to work. You don't call it a navigation. Could, could you have yeah. could you have larger larger buoys there? Yeah, then you're creating more of an eyesore for people. But I mean, most boats have GPS chart bottoms, and people would be pretty well following the line out, following the line back. It's local knowledge up there anyway to begin with. So I think you're adding more buoys, you're adding more congestion. This might this might be. Where are these boats heading into? Just an Down action. here. If they go in and they go on the beach, or they go, oh, in, yes. they go so in the channels. To secret beach or like in yeah. the channel. Or around the side. And the risk is they go over a, a cage and, and get caught. So, yeah. so it's a kayak and a, it's a motor boat, the kayaks and all that. They, can, they won't have any issues. Yeah, they go the, right over. Yeah, the passive recreation would have no issues. And I don't even know how, I mean, because they're not that big boats in there. I've seen 20 footers so in there. Probably 20 boats. Center consoles. Getting bigger. Yeah. Are they getting bigger coming up the, up the? Oh yeah, they'll just they'll come right out of the coast at Glass and Harbor. And, you know, and look around. Just beach all along that beach. They're not even secret, just all along. Go secret. So, so you can go to the left. I mean, they'll, they'll beach all the way down. Yeah. Until At basically tide, all the way down until the Colasso Harbor Rock where that where jetty spits out. Yeah, there. so we're we'll beached all the way down. It's not as wide as but there is secret beach. Um, so and then there'll be tubing and everything like that. And, yeah. yeah, well, that shouldn't be happening. But, um, okay, yeah, that's going to be something we're going to have to figure out as far as what's going to work best. And probably get input once. Yeah. yeah. I think it comes down to I mean, the corner point. markers. The, yeah. Uh, it comes down to the plot mark. The uh, what do you want to call it? The corner right. buoys. Yeah. The corner buoys. Put a spindle on it. I call it high flyer. Something. Yeah. Maybe not as big as a high flyer, but something. Yeah. Yeah. More significant than a little option. Yeah, and. So, right, because at one point we had um, people not wanting a lot of buoys, right? The reduction of buoys. So, if we can find a uh, um, compromise, that would be good on the side of buoys. So, I think that's a really good idea. Um, but I do think, you know, it's four to, like we said, four to five to eight feet of water. 
Um, so, okay. But thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Well, Mark Facey, uh, Woodland Drive, and Coy Hassett, a uh, non resident shellfish permit situated for the last 10 years or so. Um, there is a buoy specifically to aquaculture in other parts of the world that, that uh, is accepted as a, I think it's a Coast Guard regulation or something, but it's, it's like a high flyer and it, had, it says warning gear area. And it's an accepted corner marker. Like on a flag? Warning gear? Yeah. yeah. Just saying there's gear in this area. Even though that gear is typically submerged by six feet or more, it depends on the tide range of that specific area. But basically, it's saying if you that would be on the four corners, and it says there's gear inside these four corners. Yeah. It's a it's a standard aquaculture thing. Talking the white and orange buoys, about well, three feet. I, don't, I just happened to be reading about it earlier in the day. It's a book uh, by Brian <laughs> Smith called. Uh, think like a fish or eat like a fish or something that uh, is probably the best guide to aquaculture you can get in paperback. Um, it, it would uh, clarify a lot of the terms that, that are being confusing here. Right. Like if you said, be an English major too, if you said floating dock or pier, it would eliminate the confusion that some people think of floats as buoys. You know what I mean? Uh, I, think, I think we could uh, talk about our national navigation. Four to six boat, all those orange and white buoys that say have the danger signal on them and just put aquaculture farming area keep off. I think that can be achieved. And that way, you wouldn't have to put the nav aids in. People would know to go around that um, rectangle or box area. I think that's, that's exactly I think it makes sense. And those would be seasonal as well. Once all the gears out of the water, you just pull the buoys out. Yeah. Just more visible. I think that's good. Okay. Yeah, I do too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any other comments? All right. Okay. Do we want to um, do we want to move on to talk about the aquaculture reform, or do we need to discuss this? It's just like we should probably just post it for yeah. people to be aware. That's, that's, that's the new state form. Yeah. It's the new state form. We can. I can post it online. Um, the new um, DMF sent us an aquaculture description form. Yeah. I can, I can it's the new it it's the new state form. We can post it online. We just got it today. Um, they are making updates to it, so so it could change a little bit. But um, this is what is required um, from whom? From each farmer. Yes. <clears throat> yes, it is from each farmer. This is what's an required in the state. Yes. That for our application. Yep. Mike, what else did you want to touch on? I just want to uh, touch on the last question that the folks in the audience had. Uh, last one. Okay. Want to do that? Okay. So, I think one of the uh, main questions was the minor parking off 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 floating area. So I, I talked to the, uh, the traffic officer in town today. And uh, but the mining these parking lots, like two or three parking lots up there, like two dark lots and one partially paved lot, which is the beach parking lot permitted. Um, and a lot, I think a lot of folks are, are which is private lot near Tilden Ave, where some folks are uh, off, offloading boats and going out to these areas. And that's a private area. But uh, he had mentioned and said, well, if we're looking to restrict that area, maybe we have like a shellfish permit area. If that area was used for offloading, you would have to add like a permit for which aquaculture is for situate, but another permit. So you would know the person's actually out there. And if the person didn't come in at nighttime and the truck was still there, they'd probably indicate that something bad's going on out there. So it was kind of a good idea that he came up with. So like I said <laughs> when the meeting first started that the town does reserve the right to restrict where a person could offload. So um, he said not a lot of boats launch there. They do. What happens is they, they back down and they park the trailer in the beach parking lot. So it does happen a little bit. He said there was not a lot of complaints in the police logs about it. So I'm not sure how rampant it is, but from what he said, it wasn't that big of a deal. I don't live there. So I'm just explaining what he said. Um, so that covered launching mine. The last question was a, a question about. Having the uh, farmers have a quarry check 
Duxbury, we looked on Duxbury, Duxbury does not have that. So I don't think we should regulate that as well. Um, Mr. Graham had a question about MB10. His staff's currently is uh, condition approved, which is correct. Um, and the reason is because the cost of sewer plant, however, the cost of sewer plant is one fifth of the situate sewer plant. I know testing is going to be ramping up in Cohasset. So that Cohasset area that closed last year, because they don't have a shelf responsible, could open back up again as well. So DMF thought that we're not too much worries about that the dilution from the Cohasset sewer plant to close this area. So I don't see any changes coming forth to us unless we get a lot of heavy rain. So um one question came up about pinpoint the growing area so i did talk to dmf about that and um they're hopeful that which will could help us also with dmf also using uh, the mass gis system as well there's also some good tools online if you're sad with that stuff that we can map these areas maybe come back at a later date and highlight it onto the um yeah. the map or chart and then we can give you the lat longs on where the bullies would go Highlighting the whole entire growing area, like six buoys, I think would be sufficient enough. Not, it's not that big of an area that I think folks would naturally know to go left or right around, them, so which is a great idea. So we talked about the stewardship area. We talked about that. Uh, Chris, Mr. Chris Newell asked about the steps from DMF. So if you look at the way the aquaculture form processes go. It typically, the town does its due diligence, goes to the NEPA reviews, Army Corps stuff, CONCOM, and then refreshes would come out based on the delay, what's going on here, and, and the nature of the interest. Marine Fisheries has, it, has agreed to go out and look at the area with us to be sure that's going to work. Um, she was pretty happy that the field grass, our regulations at 50 versus 25 for the state. So, uh, Marine Fisheries will come out and look at the area with us in advance. Of um, any permitting processes, which is pretty good. So that's all I had to report unless I missed any questions from the folks in the room. Were there any outstanding? Yeah. Um, what about, uh, you know, defining or, well, we were talking about how long, like, about the duration of the pilot program. You know, I think it should be at least three years. And then, like, should we define the when the start of the pilot program actually begins? I mean, Say the pilot program begins like in September, but people actually don't get seed until May. So there's like six or eight months that could shoot up, you know, where we're just kind of scrambling around and getting our gear together and, you know, laying out the plot plan. And then, you know, we do get the seed and depending on when we start or how young the seed is, I mean, it might take another like two and a half years before it's, uh, you know, uh, two and a half inches or whatever. So should we uh, kind of lay that out a little bit? I mean, yeah, we haven't talked about it. we haven't talked about it. Like yeah, I mean that's a good point though. Um, the date you get approval could be off cycle, um, so you might want to start it the the spring. Well, they get approval that. with a commencement date that works with the time of year. True. So like the approval date, and then it would start the next um, growing season. Well, yeah. yeah, the yeah. next growing season, which would be basically April, right? Yeah. March, April. I, I wouldn't recommend changing now, but I think if there's the days of starting it, we always go back and say, yeah. let's extend it. It's a power program, right? It's flexible. So yeah. I don't think it's a showstopper. No, um, I just want to get hung up like, oh, no. it'll be like a two year program, and no. then six months, you know, get gobbled up on one end, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, we need six more months before the maturity. And, uh, and there are, you know, some of these people that are, you know, kind of seeing, seeing what's going on, and like, oh, they haven't produced anything. Well, we weren't expecting to produce anything for. for. Now, just one more thing. So, so the Brace Harbor area would have, um, if there was a repro restriction, the bacteria, it would be uh, two hours from harvest to uh, to the dealer, two hours ice. So okay. the, so. Yeah. I mean, Duxbury is one year, Barnesville is one hour, Duxbury is one hour, but based on the bacteria, the things that happen if no acid, it's, it would currently be two hours, okay. which is pretty good, and that would allow people 
come around and get the citric harbor if that's what they chose. I want to get, can I get the one online first because Chris yeah, has had his hand yeah. up for a while. So, um, Chris, do you want to comment? All again, um, uh, seven strawberry lane, but Mike, I, I think uh, you uh, mentioned my question from last time. Uh, I think what I was looking for was uh, for the opening of the recreational beds in the North River, sort of a, uh, a defined stepwise process from DMF on, you know, once we get the study done on yeah. dilution factors and all that, what we can do to get this opened again, because, you know, it, from what I've seen from them, they're not giving us a clear path. Oh, I will touch on that as well. Actually, I'll get five minutes of that. Yeah, can we finish the aquaculture yeah. and then we'll get to that? We do have um, an update from DMF, Chris. Um, I just wanted to follow up the, like what you're saying about the um, Mina launch, that the police officer you spoke to said people do launch from there. So the key, yeah. Right. So, like, that would be the one. That would be one thing that we like absolutely would not want would be um, trailers. And you know, I get the how great it would be from a safety standpoint. Like, yeah. hey, this guy didn't come back. Right. But uh, uh, aside from that small, you know, chance, um, so that goes back to we wouldn't want people launching from there. We wouldn't want people parking their trailers there because parking is already at such a premium. So you didn't actually say anything that made me feel any better. Right, but I, I, speaking from where I was, how I would interpret it, if you're restricting it for one person, you have to restrict it for everyone. You can't be selected in the law or regulations for one person over another. Like I said, I've never actually sat in a certain time and watched this happen, but but the town does reserve the right to limit where people actually harvest and off. Well, I would have no, I don't, I don't think a kayak launch is an appropriate place for recreational, commercial, for anybody to be launching a motorized boat. So I have no problem with that being, I mean, it could be across the board. I don't even know. I mean, there's, when I when I look at that launch, I mean, on a summer day, forget about fitting in a Ford 250, never mind a trip. Right? It's <laughs> packed. So, I mean, that is what it is. If we're talking different parts of the season, Sure, but I still don't, I just don't logistically see a motorized boat coming in and out of that. Right. And then we get to go home, we'll go and do it again the next day. And then like to the point of like the seven to seven, you know, like that, that channels, I mean, as everyone knows, it's dependent on, on the tides, right? Like you can't, so if you're sitting there and you're looking at the tides and it's, you know, two, three in the morning, because that's the only time you can get out there. So it's very, you know, I just I just don't see that as being a reasonable place to launch and to depend on that to launch. It has to, you'd have to come up, and I saw in the business plan, it's like there wasn't too many, you know, people that were saying that's going to be our spot. You know, but that's really not, I mean, I would have to see a hard time doing it, mean, having an oyster farm successfully launching from there. Right? It's just, so it sounds like a bigger restriction than more than the, the aquaculture. What Mike was saying is if you restrict, you can't just restrict the oyster farmers from not parking. Right. Right. We would have to, because right now there's no restriction on anybody parking. If you have a permit to park there, Citra resident, or there are a few non Citra residents that have permits to beach park, then you can park there. Um, so it sounds like it's a bigger, wider restriction that we'd have to propose to select and say, you can't, I know it's very difficult, but it's not restricted. In other words, you can get there five in the morning before it's busy and park your trailer there. You have to get there whenever the tide allows you. Yeah. Well, you know, you can park there early and then you can say, all right, well, if the tide allows, I'll, I'll put it in. Right? I mean, but it's like two that? hours either side. I mean, business-wise, I mean, that doesn't I, make any sense. I agree. But I agree, it's, it's impossible. Bill Graham, uh, Tilden Ave. The creek that you're talking about that goes up to that parking lot is only had enough water in for about four hours, um, wow. two, two hours each two side hours. of the high tide. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, there's no way of getting up there. Right. And there's no ramp at the uh, the parking lot. You'd be throwing it off over a cliff 
No, you lift them. <laughs> Not a, you're talking about maybe a 16 foot uh, flat bottom boat. There's no, there's no, no way of doing that. And in doing so, you'd be having a truck and a trailer. So you've got 40 feet of vehicle taking up parking spots where you have maybe 25 or 30 parking spots in the, in the paved parking lot. And the secondary parking lot is a larger parking lot uh, but that has no access to the, the creek at all. Mm -hmm. And there is one other parking lot there, and that's a private that's owned by the Hidden Cove, uh, and that's for their, they own that property. So there, there's no possibility of uh, launching out of there. A little bit of a moot point. Yeah. I think possible. so. I mean, yes. I've spent yeah. a lot of time. You could, you could stick it there and park it and park five in the morning, but you're still going to have to, like, like Bill was saying, it's, you can get the boat into the creek and pull the boat yeah, into the uh, But anyway, it's, I never, you know, when, when we were, you know, when we were looking at the applications, it was, well, you know, it's an idea, but, you know, it's really like, well, these, it kind of, to me, was like, there really isn't that great of options to get out there. Now, if you have some, some in Cohasset, great to go to you go for it. But to me, logistically, and then once if you actually go through the motions there, you're going to say to yourself, this, this isn't feasible. Yeah, I agree. And a pro, what a private landowner allows access that's up to the private I mean, landowner. Even, but even the private landowner, Bill's yeah. point, the creek doesn't go, yeah. go down Bailey's Causeway, you know, if you will, that far down. It's just, it, it's not even an option. There's no <laughs> ramp. I mean, yeah, the only ramp, ramp, the only ramp really would be on the other side, on Glades Road, on the right hand side opposite of the creek. Oh, Marsh, but then you have to go all the way around the tip of the hill. Yeah. That's the only ramp. It goes right on the public beach. Right, yeah. right, you know. But that's that would be that would be where no place to park. Yeah. Okay. I mean you could park it but like you were saying the lot, you know, but you're not gonna be doing your on and off ramping there. You'd be yeah. parking the trailer there designated immediately, but the ramp would be on the way across the street. But then you know then you can go all the way around. Anything else? Um, can we move to yeah, recreational? I'll, I'll get back to Chris's question. We've got quite a bit of info from the amount, right? Yeah, so I'm just gonna highlight it. It's uh so the Fisher Media Fisheries met with SMAS uh the full to US Dark as last week known as SMAS. Um they have Input in the title and averages, river forces with the wastewater treatment, uh, treatment plant discharges and model, but have not yet combined that with environmental conditions such as wind directions and speed in order to have the most accurate bathymetry. They're using the most recent NOAA LIDAR data for the estuary along with existing NOAA chart bathymetry for the offshore grid. That's stated previously. The North South River grid has a high has a resolution at approximately 10 meters. But they usually use 300 with the offshore grid with approximately 300 meters. Using the lighter is, is necessary with a fine resolution and the new grids found inside the mouth of the rivers. The model will run on the super, supercomputer at SMAS, which has 72 nodes with each node comprising 32 CPUs. I'm not certain this model will need or programming, new programming, but can utilize all nodes. The power is necessary. This power is necessary in order to obtain the high resolution model results we expect and need. Once again, the expectation is to have model results this summer. Should that change for any reason, I will certainly reach out to you with Susan. And then Susan also asked her, uh, Dave and Jeff Kane, another question. Um, that was their question, what are the steps? Right. Yeah. So basically, um, they're following the same steps that they did with the Plymouth Wastewater Treatment Class with diet, diet dilution analysis, um, there will be like several products that we'll need to evaluate, obviously, we know that. Then it gets into the uh, closed safety zones, depending on results of the model of 1,000 to 1 and 100,000 to 1 dilution line. If we ask for additional node, node runs under certain wastewater treatment trading conditions. So then he talks about establishing um, MOUs with the plant operators. So say if they had a plant catastrophe or something happened, then they would notify the shellfish wardens, the town, things like that, and DEP would also evaluate those processes. And this kind of gets back to the rivers where there are cameras in the rivers. 
it's not like it's not an area where you have 100 diggers out there. It's pretty simple to see the diggers out there in the rivers, and you can close it down with, with under two hours, even less. I think the state requirement is four hours actually. So we can do that twofold pretty simply. So it is going well. I think last time I talked about they stopped testing the effluent going out of the plant because it was very clean, which is a positive step for us. And then um, the last thing we talked about was the Quest of Briggs Harbor. Of course, Cohasset also has a plant, but fortunately it is one fifth the size of the situate discharge. So an MU would also be needed with the Cohasset sewer plant as well for anything in Cohasset. So, and we'll have to work on those agreements as well. It would be simple to say to it. Basically, if there was a failure, you would contact the shelter warden and then you would act and close the area down, keep everybody out there, see if any catch up that's out there. In, in case of the Cohasset, you would call the, the master diggers or the oyster aquaculturists to uh, that harvest if there was a problem with Cohasset. So, pretty simple regulation stuff that you can handle. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Then, uh, Chris, if you're still on it, if you need further explanation, just feel free to email me and I can uh, share this in greater detail. Yeah, thanks, Mike. All right. Any additional questions on that? Do we have anything else to discuss? That's all I have. That's all we have. Next is we have to figure out that map, the corners. So that's for next week. And Susan, I would like, I think that's just what, just what you're talking about, a yeah. very, very clear visual. Because yeah. even though I travel in and out of there some, like, I'm not really, really um, familiar with the exact area that we're talking about right. to propose the option of the um, pilot program plots. Okay. You know, the area that we're talking about, outside the eelgrass. Yep. And the four corners. Right. Well, probably more than four corners. It's like yeah, a, it's I an mean, unusual jagged area. Yeah, I know, like a total area. Yeah. It, the total area. Depending on how the arbor triangle rectangle, however it looks, will make the proper side amount of blue, so it's clearly marked. Yeah. And just yeah. for us to see it on a on a yeah. piece of paper or on a screen of the exact area we're talking, about, yeah. that would make it better for me. Yep. Yeah. No, great. Right. That's what we need to figure out. Okay. All right. Um, Public comments? Any other comments? So, so. All right. We are to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 A